not make me your enemy. You cannot outrun me. Challenge me! Peace is not balance here. I do not channel the demigods. What is up guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how to play the new Udia rework. So personally, I think this rework is absolutely amazing because it fixes a lot of the issues that the old version had. And also, this is going to be the AD Bruiser version of the new Udia. If you guys want to see the AP one as well, let me know and I'll make a video for that as well. So first of all, his passive, he has the four stances that he can switch between, similar to the old Udia. And the new thing here is that you can empower one of your abilities. So your ultimate is basically in the passive now. So for example, if I use the Q right now, which is going to give me a burst of attack speed and also empower the next two auto attacks, then I'll be able to recast this ability. And that is going to give me even more attack speed and it's also going to add this chain lightning. Similar to like Volibear when he has his passive fully stacked. But if the target is isolated while you're doing this, it's going to deal insane amount of damage. So on the AD version, of course, we want to be maxing out the Q. And then we have the E here. Does the same thing as the old Udyr. You run at someone with more moon speed and you hit them and they're going to be CC'd. And if you empower this one, the E, then it actually makes it so you cannot be disabled. So that you cannot be slowed and you cannot be stunned or something. So that's really, really cool. Because what happened previously is that Udia just gets perma guided in fights. And this basically gets rid of that opportunity. So that's really nice to have. And then we have the W which gives you a shield when you use it. And then your next two auto attacks will heal. And if you empower this one, you're going to get a bigger shield, you're also going to heal a lot, and then you also heal based on your maximum health. So that's why it's important that you build HP. So, Udia is actually really really strong in the early game because your Q guys, like when you're passive, which is basically your ultimate when that's ready, which allows you to empower one of your abilities, and we want to use that mostly on the Q, because that's where the DPS comes from. So we're just gonna go ahead and max out the Q obviously because of the build we are going, but there are different variations of Udia's build. For example, if you play him jungle, then you most likely want to max out his ultimate, or not ultimate, but the R, because that gives him a lot of AOE damage and it also works with the AP Udia build. But you can use that W to sustain back up, it actually heals you for a ton. Also later on in the game guys. And you want to wait until your passive is ready. Then you go in like the normal or the old Udyr with your E to like CC at the opponent. Use Q once, auto attack them twice and then recast your Q. And you can see the damage just becomes absolutely ridiculous. Especially if somebody tries to fight you level 1, you will be able to shred them. You can go PTA, press the attack that some people used to do on top lane Udia, the old version. It gives you a lot of damage early on, but I like to go Conqueror because it also allows you to scale up a lot better, while also making you strong in extended fights. PTA is more used for burst damage, so if you want that, of course you can go for that as well. And then we also have Lethal Tempo as the other option. For the summoners, the ghost is a must have, even though you have that new E which makes it so people cannot CC you if you use the awakened version. It's not enough all the time, right? You still need the ghost, it's crucial on this champion. And then for the second summoner, you can go ignite, flash, TP, or whatever you want to. Just make sure that you do have ghost because it's still a Crucial summoner spell on this champion. I'm just playing with Flash and Ghost because I really like that extra mobility. Makes it very hard for people to escape. It's like similar to Darius in a way that when people overextend, you just pop the Ghost and you run them down. And 
And this right here, what you just witnessed, is the power of Udyr. I don't even have an item yet and you saw that damage coming in. That is what you can do guys, that is what you want to do in the early game. Like You can really play aggressive because every single time you empower one of your abilities you're going to get insane stats. And this is also the Spirit Guide Udyr skin by the way. It looks a lot better right now with the reworked version over the old one. And I'm going to rush the tier 2 boots because I'm playing against the kill. Which is probably one of the worst matchups because she's a ranged champion that can permakite. And she's also auto attack reliant so armor boots for mobility but also to reduce the damage we're taking from auto attacks. We have the Phoenix version that I have not put points into yet because it's not necessary with this build. But it makes you deal AoE damage. It forms like a storm around you and if you empower that R ability, that storm is going to like follow the opponent. So that's pretty cool. But the really cool change here or one of them in my opinion is that empowered E that makes it so he cannot be slowed and he can also not be disabled. Just look at that damage. It is ridiculous. I am still not buying a lot of damage, I just have the tier 2 boots. But when you get to empower the Q guys and that chain lightning, and especially if you manage to isolate the enemy champion while you have that empower Q up, that is amount of damage they will not be able to deal with. Also remember, every single time you use that Awaken, which is basically empowering your abilities, or when you use a new ability, then you get that increased attack speed. And on top of also giving you attack speed, which is even more crucial when you play him as a jungler, you also lower the cooldown of the passive. So even though it seems like your passive has a pretty high cooldown, as long as you switch between your stances probably in fights and so on, you can really lower the cooldown and later on in the game it's going to be on a very low cooldown. Also it can feel like he's very mana hungry early on. He will be if you're spamming the abilities, but later on guys, it's not going to be an issue at all. We are fighting in a minion wave most of the time, not something you want to do, but I'm fed here so I don't care. And the kill goes down once again. And that was that Phoenix form you can see. It deals every damage so it's actually really good for wave clearing. But we are not really putting any points to it because of the build we are using. Which is the AD oriented build. It's like an AD and a Brusa. So you also really make use of that W. Which heals you based on your maximum health when you empower it. So that's why even if you go for a damage build. It can be a really good idea to get some HP. So this is going to be a mix of damage by going Blade of the Ring King first item and then you also get stuff like the Frostfire Gauntlet for some tankiness but also some CC so that is going to make it really difficult for Udia to like get kited. But like he's a pretty simple champion like when you read his abilities it can be pretty confusing. But if you like play him once or twice then you really understand how easy this champion is. There's no advanced stuff about him. There's just a lot of text to his abilities so it can be a bit confusing at the start, maybe a bit overwhelming but just play him like one or two games and you'll understand his entire kit because it is pretty simple.
And it's pretty cool too. Like, I definitely think he's way better than the old version. Because he's a very old champion, right? He's one of the first champions, if I remember right, and... There have been so many champions since he was released. And all of them have some kind of dashes and other type of mobility that just makes it hard for him to catch up. So that's why this new rework, I feel like this is definitely going to fix a lot of his problems. This kill is definitely a very bad matchup, especially as the game progresses. Because she's pretty mobile with her W and she also has the Q to kite. The thing is, if you empower your W or your E guys, then you lose the DPS from not having the empower Q, right? So if you go in with an empower D onto the kill, for example, you will get within range of her, but you're also going to lose the damage from not having the empower Q. But if you pop that Empowered E with your Ghost, you should be able to run down anyone, especially as you get your boots and mobility stuff. So it's, it's a very difficult matchup, I'm not gonna lie, like it's going to be very difficult as it progresses, because he's a ranged champion that just permakites. So if you're playing against Udia, this is the type of champion you never want to pick him into. But if you can, you can pick him into melee champs and also tanks. That Q is going to shred tanks. So you can just keep the wave here. We're just constantly looking for opportunities to like engage onto the kill with the E. So normally, you want to like play around their anti-engage abilities, for example, that would be the Chaos Q. Which is a slow. And then you can like try to run them down. See, that is some crazy damage, but we also tank the tower here, so... Not the best trait. But now we have Vagar coming in, so you can just flash her if you want to. And just pop the ghost. The next form, you can see I'm constantly rotating between the stances. Because you get a lot of bonus attack speed, but it also lowers the cooldown of your passive guys, so... It allows you to empower your abilities more often if you make sure that you constantly switch between the stances. So that is probably the most important thing here to learn about this champion, the new rework, is that you need to make sure that you switch between the stances because every single time you do that, you get increased attack speed and also lower the cooldown of that passive, which is basically your ultimate. And of course, before you engage in a fight, make sure that passive is actually ready. Otherwise, you might lose out on DPS, unless you are fed like I am right now. Now we will go ahead and get the Blade of the Ruined King here, so that gives you insane DPS. The best single target DPS early game from one item. That's why you see a lot of auto attack reliant champions rush this item. And that mobility is also huge on something like a Udyr, because... More mobility for you and less mobility for the target that you're chasing. Easier to like gap close and stuff. So the enemy Kaiser is pretty fat, the volleyball is also insanely fat, sadly, so this is going to be a very difficult game. Especially because they have a pretty tryhard team composition, I would say, with the Kaiser and the Janna. And Kaiser is a tank strata, so they can kite us pretty well. But not if we empower the E, because we will not be able to get CC'd. And uh, yeah, the Kaiser just got blasted. And we got the tower as well here. We have two people coming in.
Um, so yeah, for a champion that only has tank items right now, he's definitely doing a lot of damage. The Volibear only has like his mythic item and just armor and HP. That's pretty cool. But we also not at the point where we can actually tank people yet because I only had the Blade of the Ruined King. So this, this is the kind of stuff you do not want to pull off because the Volibear was also fed. If he was not, then this would have worked out. Now we are going to itemize into the Frostfire, our mythic item for some tankiness and also some really nice CC. But if you want to go for a squishy version of Udia and higher damage, Trinity Force is the item to go for. Like you have Blade of the Ring King and Trinity Force, you're going to shred people in 1 versus 1. But at the same time, if you ever have to group up, you might just get one shot straight up, cause you will be so squishy. The build I'm using this game right here makes you strong in 1 versus 1, but also in team fights because you'll be able to frontline for your team while also dealing a lot of damage. So because we're not really putting any points into the Phoenix form, we don't have the best way clear. So after this item you can go for stuff like the Titanic Hydra which makes you deal AoE damage so you have some way clear that allows you to be a lot better as a split pusher, but if you are playing him as a jungler, you do not need a Titanic Hydra because you'll be maxing out the R, the Phoenix form, so you have a lot of AoE damage. So just go on a split pushing adventure trying to take down the towers here. If you had the Sheen, you'll be able to do this a lot faster. Well, we are not escaping a super fed Kaiser, sadly. He was insanely fed from farming the bot lane, so that clearly did not work out. But we almost got the tower, so we just keep sweep pushing. And this kill is going to be a problem later on. She's already level 11. But we have the scaling from the Vagar. And then we also have the Rengar, but not really a good champion into a kill when they start grouping up. And uh, yeah, nice one shot. It's always fun to have it in the team, but not so fun to play against, cause like Rengar has been the most broken champion in Hilo for a long time since he got reworked. And for whatever reason, he is not getting nerfed. But yeah, there's that. So yeah, you get to the team fighting stage as Udir, Preferably, you want some tank items before that happens, otherwise you'll be too squishy. So just run around and you can empower your E guys when you chase somebody. So, for example, Janna will not be able to stop you. Like, Enchanter support or anything will not be able to CC you or anything at all. Because you'll be unstoppable pretty much. So that gives you like a guaranteed CC onto the target you're going to chase and then your teammates might be able to follow up. But this is probably not the best game to like display the strength of this new champion just because of the team comp I am playing against, which is one of the worst when you play Udyr, the new rework. Also the old one, because they have so much kiting. They have the Janna, they have the Kill, they have the Kai'Sa, so if they play it right, it should be absolutely impossible for me to like do anything. But with this build, we want to prioritize a lot with the split pushing aspect of the game. Because that's why we can really make stuff happen. Not sure why the uh, brother bear just stopped for no reason. Maybe uh, he got like mad and decided to type instead. Be careful not wasting your empowered ability though, especially early on when the cooldown is pretty high. But well, that right there is the damage we're dealing with the maximum health damage and the power of the Blade of the Ruined King. That's why Q Max AD Udyr is insane in 1 vs. 1s, and if you're playing against tanks, 
you will be able to shred them as well. It is a champion that has a lot of damage in the lane, but he also has a lot of sustain. For example, you can use that Empower W to heal back up really fast. You can also use it to da tank damage. There's a champion with a lot of different playstyles. There, there will be a lot of different builds for him as well. There won't just be just be that one build that's better than everything else. Like there's going to be a lot of different builds similar to the old Udyr. And that is also part of what makes champions fun to play is that you can constantly rotate between different builds. And rune pages as well. I am not quite sure why the Volbear is trying to focus me down over the squishy targets, but it is what it is. And the kill just got blasted once again. And we can just keep pushing it out here because we want the tower. We really want that tower to go down. That is going to open up the jungle for us. So we want to take this down if possible. CC onto the Volibear and switching the stances up, so getting the shield and bonus attack speed as well. And he's going down, we got the tower, and I can just walk into the jungle and take away the camps. You can see that Phoenix Form is doing a lot of magic in the jungle. And also top lane if you want to play him like AP Bruiser, which is another really fun build guys. So if you want to see that, I can definitely show that as well. They could be doing the Baron right now, so it'd be nice if the Lux could check it out and then we can recall. Getting the Frostfire Gauntlet for a tank item. This is gonna allow you to like frontline and also team fight a lot better. Because the CC is slow, it's really nice to have. And then next up we can go for Titanic. Sucks a bit that none of us are getting vision on the Baron, cause they could definitely be sneaking it, but now we have ward, so it's okay. We need more focus on the objectives as well. So if you're playing in these types of games where people constantly get caught around the map, it can be really difficult to spit push. So in that case, you can just try to group up with your team. But it's a really bad idea to try to group up against that team especially. If you look at what they have, they have a kill, they have a 13 kills Kaiser that can shred anyone on our team, including me. And they have Janna to like permakite and protect people. With a kill ultimate too. So it would be really bad for us and especially me to like group up. I want to focus on split pushing, but that is not something you can do all the time. We are getting obliterated by that 15 kills Kaiser. Well, it sucks that she's so fat at this game, so of course you can't really do a lot of stuff. Normally, if it was even, you would easily be able to stun her and then run away. But in this case, nope, that is not happening. It does not matter what I built, I would get shredded because she, she's so fat, obviously, so not much to do about that. At least the Janna messed up the ultimate, so Kaiser still died. And Cyan coming in for a flank. Really nice stun by the Veigar too, so we should be able to secure the Drake right here. Which is of course awesome. Now guys, this is a frontline with mixed damage build. Do not get a ton of kills for this build. You can, but you won't all the time. Cause you have to frontline, you have to be the frontline for your team. But if you want to pick up a lot of kills, you stay in the side lane. And you try to force those one versus ones. You just wait for the opponent to overextend a little bit. Then similar to Darius, you pop that ghost. And then you also have the flies for extra mobility. Run them down, they'll not be able to match that damage. Now we're gonna max out the E because every point is going to increase the bonus moon speed. 
Helps a lot with running away, but also chasing people. We can just go all the way in here. This volleyball is getting shredded. If you look at the circle below the enemy champion, after I stun them, it's going to display the cooldown before it can stun them again. Otherwise it would be pretty OP if you could just keep perma stunning somebody, but now we're gonna go for the Baron, the jungle is down. And your Empower Q guys, Awaken Q, does a lot to the Baron. See how fast it went down with me and the Rengar DPS, so now we got the Baron. And then we can start building the atoms towards the Titanic Hydra. Almost level 16. This is obviously not a big spike compared to a lot of other champions because you have all your ultimates or abilities ready in the early game. But still, every point of level you get is a huge bonus to your base stats. But it is not as big as something like a kill level 16. That was a very nice turn and this guy is just getting perma CC'd. So just keep pushing it out in the bot side, beginning the split pushing. Now that we have the Baron, it's a lot easier to pull off. And we also have the AoE damage from the Tiamat, giving us that extra wave clearing benefits. They should be fine mid, hopefully they don't run it down. Constant switch between the stances when you push and also when you fight. And my team is dying, somehow. Which sucks quite a bit. We got the tower, now we just have to get out of here. But of course, Janna is a really balanced champion. A, real, a lot of balance CC as well. So we are not escaping that one, but we got the entire bot side, so I call it worth it trading me for the bot side, but my entire team died almost, so... Yeah, I think they equalized because we lost the Baron. That Janna just walked straight through the entire wave right there and still managed to catch, catch me while I had that E bonus movement speed. That is a very nice champion. And then she also has the Glacial Augment, so no one can escape. Rengar going for that Serath, this guy. Gonna get one shot. And he is gone. I'm gonna try to help the Rengar if I can, because like the entire team is gonna go for him. I don't think he will survive though. That's a really balanced Janna. A ridiculous movement speed. Catching up to everybody. We need to have more focus around the Drakes for sure, because no one is like focusing it down right now. And that's the fight starting topside. Maybe we can push it out mid. We have to get out of here. I cannot tank that alone, because that Kaiser is way too fit. Vega is pushing mid, with the inhibitor down too. So even though they're getting the drag, at least we have opened up their base from the bot side and the mid side. They're getting the soul though, and that is the Inferno soul on a Seraph and an 18 kills Kaiser that is full build. That is going to make the team fighting super super hard for all of us right now, because our team comp is pretty bad. They have like a very Try hard composition, our comp is more like for fun. A Zion on Vagar bot lane. And a locksmith. 
So we don't have the scaling on our side, despite having the Vagar, but we want to try to like make it work by making a cheese play. So we have to like camp somewhere and then try to catch them. We're gonna take down the Kaiser right here. Cannot let this Kaiser escape. Kaiser is like the main focus because if she goes down, they don't have anything left. Like I can face tank everything else. That Kaiser is, like, is sitting on 19 kills right now, I think, so no one can tank us. I'm just gonna push the top side, really abusing that split pushing as much as I possibly can. Taking down the tower, going for the inhibitor. I had to back off because like the entire team is rotating top side. I will not be able to escape because I don't have Ghost up, but it can be a really good idea to save up your passive, like having it ready for when you need to escape. And then you proc it the moment they are throwing any CC at you because it's going to get denied, like it is not going to work. This scale is almost 16, she's 1 and 12 but it does not matter because she's getting into late game. Now we are going to recall, we are going to get the Titanic Hydra. Insane AoE damage on the enemy champions, but also on the minion waves. As soon as you have this Titanic Hydra finished guys, your CS numbers will go up. Like really fast, because it's a lot easier to farm. And you also work with a lot faster. That's a really nice chain CC from the sign and the lock, so she could not ult. Now we should be going for the Baron to close out the game because like right now honestly if they group up they are a lot stronger than we are. So if you don't get the Baron right now it's going to make the game very very difficult. Which it already is, like it's 34 minutes in the game almost. I like to sometimes camp in the bushes, if a squishy target like the Seraph for example if he comes in, I will either get the flash or I will get the kill. And if you're playing against champions that are way stronger than you, like the Kaiser Janna kill for example, then you really want to try to cheese them. Guys just look at the damage when I have that empower Q on the Baron. Like the objectives are getting shredded so fast. Do not underestimate the damage you're getting from that empower Q. Man, the different stances also look insane with this skin. Actually, it looks pretty cool. Um, by the way, what do you guys think about this new rework? Have you guys tried it out? Let me know what you think down in the comments. Now that we have the Baron, we should definitely look for a play at the moment without trolling it. We don't have the Scion with us yet, so we should not be focusing stuff until he's here. Oh no! The kill is flanking! That's actually my bad. I did not think the Scion would go bot side, but also I engaged way too early. I did not want to engage, but what I tried to do is that just stun somebody and then Vega or Cage or something could keep them locked up. But I think our Scion TP bot. Which of course sucks a lot. Because now we just lost the Baron once again. And the sign also ran it down for whatever reason. We have to like try to chain CC them, especially with the sign ultimate, because that is really what's going to um allow us to close out the game. Oh, they actually don't have the soul yet. I thought that they got it early on with the uh, other Drake, but now they have it. 
I feel like I heard this whole like sound animation when I took that break before this one. But well, they have it now. Which is a big rip for some team fights, and the only way we can win this is the chain CC combo where we have to abuse the Cyan ultimate with a Vagar Cage and Ring all in. And I need to stun the Kaisa, the Kill, or the Serath. Preferably the Kaisa though. Now we have to go mid for one final A ramp because if we win a fight, then we can close out the game. Same thing for the opposing team here. It is not good for us to group up, but that's the only chance we have right now. We need a really, really good ultimate on them. From the Cyan, or Vega Cage. Rengar flanking in his ultimate, so now we actually need to fight. We see Volibar topside. Alright, let's go guys. That was absolutely huge from the Cyan. That is exactly what we needed. And if you notice what I did, I fly stunned the kill so she could not ult the Kai'Sa. That Cyan ultimate just won us the game as well. That is the exact team fighting we look for. And now we just have to wait for the mini wave and we can go ahead and end the game. Finally. And this fall by also going down. And then we can go ahead and end it. So that was how to play the new Udia rework guys. If you want to see the AP version, let me know. Hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching and see you all next time.